The story of intuitive machines, at least to my mind, really begins with NASA. Back in 2017, then NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine formally established the Artemis program with the goal of finally returning humanity to the moon, and this time to stay permanently. As I'm sure many of you are aware, the last human to step foot on the moon was all the way back in 1972 with the Apollo 17 mission. This was long before I myself was born. And by many measures, for most of my life, it has felt like we've been living in the twilight period of manned space exploration, having missed out on the giants of the era before us and having to settle for low Earth orbit. Instead of sending humanity almost 400,000 kilometers to the moon or even further, we have contented ourselves with sending astronauts a mere 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. NASA's Artemis program plans to change all that and finally return us on a path of inspiration and expansion further into space. Part of the way NASA plans to make it feasible to return to the moon and eventually establish a lunar base is to work much more closely with commercial partners. Contracts with private companies, competitive bidding processes, and the end of cost plus contracts should drive competition, innovation, and allow projects to be done for much cheaper than NASA would be able to execute them internally with all the politics, deals, delays, and red tape. This brings us back to Intuitive Machines, the company with a stock symbol LUNAR, or L-U-N-R, who are unashamedly focused on building out and capitalizing on a future lunar space economy. However, this is definitely a two-edged sword for the company, as while there are currently a lot of lucrative NASA contracts available for lunar missions, and usually you can count on the government to pay its bills on time and in full, they are also in the extremely dangerous position of being almost completely reliant on a single customer, that being NASA. Today, we're taking a deep look at the Intuitive Machine's lunar lander known as Nova C, a spacecraft Intuitive is building for NASA to land on the moon. This is very exciting for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is the fact that this may very well be the first commercial lander to set down on the lunar surface after several attempts. Firstly, back in 2019, the non-profit Israeli organization called Space IL sent a privately funded lander called Bereshit, but unfortunately this lander crashed along with a payload including human DNA samples and thousands of tardigrades, extremely hardy microorganisms which could actually potentially still be alive on the moon today. Next up, a Japanese company called iSpace was expected to have the honor of being the first commercial company to land on the moon with their recent M1 lander. But devastatingly, a freak software glitch caused the spacecraft to aim its landing sequence five kilometers above the ground instead of aiming at the lunar surface. Everything actually worked completely flawlessly if the lunar surface had been five kilometers higher than it actually was. Unfortunately, this resulted in the craft floating down and crashing to the surface as well. Beyond just being the first commercial company to land on the moon, there's also the payloads and science that the lander is expected to perform to be excited about. Not only is this craft delivering scientific payloads for NASA, they're also delivering payloads for private companies to the lunar surface. Finally, this is extremely exciting in the context of being the first Artemis program spacecraft to touch down on the moon and paving the way for future astronauts to finally, finally, return there. The spacecraft is a product of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, or CLPS for short, a component of Artemis, with the goal of sending robotic landers and rovers to the lunar surface as a precursor to the future manned missions. These robotic landers would be scouting for lunar resources, testing in situ resource utilization feasibility, and performing lunar science. The Nova Sea Lander is a tall, hexagonal cylinder landing on six legs with a mass of 1,908 kilograms. 
It is capable of carrying 100 kilograms of payload to the surface. It uses solar panels to power its operations while on the surface, generating 200 watts of power. Propulsion and landing use liquid methane as a fuel and liquid oxygen for the oxidizer. Intuitive's Nova C rover is currently planned to have three NASA missions to the surface of the moon, IM-1, IM-2, and IM-3. The first mission, IM-1, is coming up very soon, due to launch in Q3 of this year, launching aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. It will go into an elliptical orbit around the Earth, followed by a translunar injection maneuver to put it into lunar orbit. IM-1 will land on the moon on the rim of a crater known as Malapert A, near the South Pole. Unfortunately, the craft will only operate for about 14 days, a fairly short period of time considering the massive work and expense that has gone into getting the lander to its destination. This is due to the fact that a lunar day is about 14 Earth days, and once the lander passes into the 14 day long lunar night, it will get so cold that the spacecraft will cease to function. This is a major issue that the company is looking to address for the future by developing a radioisotope heater capable of keeping its landers warm for the freezing lunar nights that can drop to as low as negative 200 degrees Celsius. Some of the exciting NASA payloads for Nova C are as follows. LN-1 is a small CubeSat-sized beacon that will demonstrate autonomous spacecraft positioning and can support future lunar and orbital missions via tracking, navigation, and comparisons for lunar surface navigation. LRA is a collection of unique mirrors used for measuring distance. This array is mounted to the lander and reflects laser lights back to orbiting spacecraft to determine the precise location of the craft. Scalps will capture video and still image data of the effects of the lander plume as it interacts with the lunar surface. This will be critical for modeling future lunar and Mars landings. There will also be a low frequency radio receiver to provide measurements of the plasma environment that will be encountered by astronauts. Now, in addition to these NASA payloads being carried by Nova C, Intuitive Machines has sold payload slots to other private companies and entities. Eagle Cam is intended to film the first ever third person view of an extraterrestrial spacecraft landing. This camera will be released just prior to the landing and film from about 30 meters away. The ILO X telescope is a miniaturized lunar imaging suite able to capture images of the Milky Way from the surface of the moon, a much better location for deep space astronomy than the Earth's surface, which encounters much more interference. There's also Tiger Eye, a radiation me measurement sensor, and Lunagram is a plate mounted on the lander that contains information about Earth. It's an extremely interesting project, similar to a time capsule that will last for ages on the unchanging lunar surface that's subjected to neither weather nor erosion. It's interesting to imagine what future visitors to the moon thousands of years in the future could think of finding this unique time capsule. The company has actually even sold a completely commercial mission, the IM-4, to fly after the first three NASA missions are complete. This is actually a great sign for NASA as well as Intuitive Machines. By fostering these commercial capabilities and being just one customer instead of the only lunar customer, they can help reduce the cost of these missions and grow a thriving lunar economy that is not solely just reliant on NASA. It's not all sunshine and rainbows for Intuitive Machines, however. The first IM-1 mission has already slipped from the end date of 2022 to Q1 of 2023, to now Q3 of 2023, and we don't know for sure if this date will hold either. There have been several problems, including issues with the propellant tanks, which failed during qualification testing. However, CEO Steve Altimus has said that those issues have now been resolved and the spacecraft is in final assembly. There is definitely some risk around this first landing especially though. After having watched two previous landings fail and 
get destroyed on the lunar surface, there will be a lot of nerves as we watch this amazing spacecraft set down. If they can accomplish the feat though, they'll make history and it'll be incredibly exciting for NASA, the company, and the entire public at large. Putting us one step closer to returning humans to the moon and setting up a permanent lunar base. I for one can't wait to see that future. So hopefully that gives you the rundown on what Nova C is all about. I know it's a very interesting topic to me. I know it's pretty light on the financial and investing side of things and more heavy on the science and space side of things, but I do find that interesting as well. Hopefully you don't mind videos like this. Let me know down in the comments below if you prefer me to talk more about a stock price or an, as opposed to some of these more technical mission videos. If you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, I definitely invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos very regularly. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.